receiving Christ. Suppose that on your wedding day as you stood before the pastor he suddenly began to say these words, Do you take this woman to be your personal cook, to clean your house, and do your dishes? Do you take her from this day forth to vacuum the floors, and to dust the furniture as long as you both shall live? Suddenly your wife-to-be says, Stop. If you want me as a person that only does things for you, you can hire a maid. I want you to love me and take me for who I am. If you take me for who I am, I will do all those things for you, but I want you to take me. All of me. I don't want you to take just my benefits and not my person. Now, it seems odd that some teachers never notice that the only true object of saving faith is none other than Christ himself, not the Saviorhood of Christ nor the Lordship of Christ, but Christ himself. God does not offer salvation to the one who will believe on one of the offices of Christ, nor is an office of Christ ever presented as an object of faith. Neither are we exhorted to believe on the atonement, nor on the cross, nor on the priesthood of the Savior. All of these are embodied in the person of Christ, but they are never separated nor is one ever isolated from the rest. Much less are we permitted to accept one of Christ's offices and reject another. The notion that we are so permitted is a modern-day heresy, I repeat, and like every heresy it has had evil consequences among Christians. Do you get the point? Why do we emphasize a part of Christ, his benefits, and office of Christ, and not Christ? That's like taking a wife in marriage as your personal cook and not for her person. Discussion Questions 1. Read John 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as received him, the Lord Jesus Christ, dot, Jesus as Savior, Jesus as Lord. Jesus as priest, to them gave he power to become the sons, or children, of God. 2. Read Acts 16 verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. We are to believe, that is, trust or entrust ourselves to whom? 3. Read Luke 6 verse 46. And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? What does the word Lord imply? 4. Read Matthew 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. What does the word Jesus imply? 5. Read Luke 23 verse 2. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation, and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. What does the word Christ imply? 6. Read Romans 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. According to this verse, the gospel or good news is. 7. Read Romans 1 verses 1 to 3. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. The gospel of God centers around or is concerning part of his Son or all of his Son. 8. Read John 6 verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. When you eat something, what does that imply? 9. Read Galatians 3 verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. When a person is baptized into Christ he puts on. What part of Christ does he put on? 10. Read Acts 9 verses 5 to 6. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? 
And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said, Unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. When Saul was converted, what two questions did he ask Jesus? 11. Read Romans 7 verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. To whom are we to be married? To what part of him are we married? Are you enjoying a good marriage with Christ? Do you talk, communicate, love, and worship him?